Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kelvin here. So recently, China stocks have been crashing like nobody's business. So in this video, I'll give you guys an update on what actually happened. Why are the China stocks dropping like grapes? I think it drop like um, a grapes, no? Can drop, 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 drop. I can feel it. Then I'll give you my thoughts on the whole thing. What's my prediction? Should you buy the dip or should you stay far, far away? Before I start, I would appreciate it if you can do me a favor to help to tap the like button. It will help out the channel a lot. In return, I will say thank you in Japanese. Arigato gozaimasu! Okay, let's not waste any time and let's start right now. So, in the recent few months, the China government has been cracking down on many China companies. Their most recent crackdown was on China private education firms, sending their stock price to go 18 levels underground. TAL education has dropped over 90% year to date. Same for New Oriental Education, Coolant, and many other private education companies. Just before this, they were cracking down on TD, saying that the company was collecting data illegally. Then, they lectured Alibaba, Tencent, ByteDance, and 9 other firms over data security concerns. The government also blocked Tencent's $5.3 billion mergers of Graham streamers Huya and Douyu, then also asked Tencent to end exclusive music contracts. Started their crackdown on Meituan, fined Alibaba $2.78 billion for the anti-competitive shenanigans, and also fined a few more companies like Baidu, SoftBank, ByteDance for their illegal monopolistic behavior. Not only that, late last year, the China government also blocked Jack Ma's and IPO, after finding out that they are likely political beneficiaries. You know what this reminds me of? If you ever play Dota, you will know what I mean. First blood, double kill, killing spree. If you check iShares Hang Seng Tech ETF, which holds a lot of the tech companies like Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com, Meituan, you will see that it has dropped almost 30% from its peak. So why is this happening? With crackdowns, crackdowns everywhere, it will seem that right now, no one is safe from the Chinese government. There are actually a few reasons for all of this crackdown, because believe it or not, they are not cracking down just for fun. So let's go through them. First, they want to prevent monopolistic behaviors. Many of the tech giants have very shady practices where they force their retailers to only work with them. They be like, if you work with us, then you cannot go other place to work also. No, no, no. For example, if you set up shop in Alibaba, you cannot set up on other platforms which Alibaba thinks are the competitors. This is the same for Meituan. They force their retailers to sign exclusive sale contracts. Same for Tencent, where they force the artists to have exclusive music rights with them. Check this out. Tencent owns Kugo Music, QQ Music, and Kuo Music. So they have a huge monopoly on the music industry. Then NetEase and Miku Music, GG Law. When the crackdown came along, NetEase said something like, or oh, be good. Then also, when Tencent wanted to merge their Douyi with Huya, the government blocked it. They'd be like, oi, cannot. This is because the government wanted to prevent just a few companies from dominating everything. Because with all these monopolistic behaviors, all the other smaller companies were really GG. They won't stand a chance against all the tech giants who are already dominating the space. This is actually the same thing that's happening in the US. It was found that companies like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google have too much monopoly in the industry, and the US government is proposing to break them up. But in US, the government is taking a super long time to decide on this. There was a 16-month investigation, some Congress hearing, and up to now, August 2021, this issue is still not settled. If you think that's long, Microsoft and Trust Battle took 21 years to settle. Bill Gates went from this to this when the whole thing ended. True story. Meanwhile, in China, the crackdown is very efficient. The government is like, pa pa pa, you guys stop this now ah. I say now means now. So that was the first reason to prevent monopolistic behaviors. Second reason is security concern. When Didi decided to IPO, the government found that Didi has serious violations of laws and regulations in collecting and using personal information. Didi had to remove 25 of the apps from the App Store and say that it sincerely accepts and firmly follows instructions from regulators. Not only that, ByteDance's new app and nearly 130 apps including fitness, video streaming, online shopping, education and others were ordered to fix their user data collection practices within 15 days. Then, the government also removed 90 apps from the App Store for collecting irregular personal information. They also found that over 60% of WeChat mini programs did not encrypt user information and over 90% of them did not protect users' data. So, the government had to step in immediately and tell them, Hey, you all fix these security loopholes ah, or else. Again, privacy and security concerns are also a big thing in the US. For example, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg had to attend a Congress hearing for its user privacy concerns. How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. Besides security concerns, the third reason is to reduce education costs. 
over the past few years, the private tutoring business has been flooding big big, especially last year when the pandemic came along. If you are from Singapore, you will know how some parents like to send their kids to all sorts of tuition in order to help raise their children's grades, in order to bring honor to the family. This is the same thing for China. More than 75% of students aged around 6 to 18 are attending after school tutoring lessons. They'd be like, you want childhood? How about you get an A in your exam first? Ah? So now, China is forcing tutoring companies to be registered as non-profit organizations. The reason is because they want to ease the burden on children as well as their parents' finances, which actually is a good thing. I feel China really made the right move here because if anything, there's two sectors that you shouldn't capitalize on, healthcare and education. Everyone should have an equal chance to assess them. Those were the few main reasons for the crackdown, for now. So, what's the impact of all of these crackdowns? Before that, you need to view China like a very strict parent, and the China companies are their children. The reason they are caning their children is not because they want to cane for fun or anything. The reason is because they have done something wrong. Same for us, right? If we do anything wrong, like skipping school or lose the Tupperware, our mom will whack us, but they don't want to whack us until we go hospital. That, that would be illegal. Lah. The Chinese government is doing the exact same thing. They are punishing the companies because they did something wrong. So, what's the impact? First, by preventing monopolistic behavior, it will mean that smaller companies now have a chance to compete with the big guys. This would incentivize innovation because competition is always good for the entire industry. Like Nokia kept making the same phones over and over. Then, when iPhone came along, Nokia lost their business. Or when Tesla came along, all the other automakers have to up their game to stay relevant. But what does this mean for all the big companies? Personally, I wouldn't worry too much. As long as they stick to the regulations and keep innovating, they will have no problem. As for the tutoring companies, I think that they will never recover back to their height for a very long time. They might even go private in the end. Because China doesn't want them to operate like a normal company where profit is the main goal. Instead, they want them to do what the education sector is supposed to do to teach students while reducing burdens of parents and children. Next, after the crackdown on user privacy and security loopholes, you can bet that the programmers won't anyhow code now. Security will be one of the company's main concerns. User data will be much safer and won't be misused easily, which is better for China and the users. So what's my long-term views on all of this? Other than tutoring companies, all the other stock crashes are just uncertainties. The fundamentals are still very strong. The e-commerce giants are dominating in the e-commerce space. Companies like Alibaba's revenue is growing steadily, and they are even trying to compete with Amazon. Tencent has a foot in a lot of online businesses. They are also planning to expand globally. GT.com plans to build 5 million physical stores in the near future. And China has said that it is looking to drive up domestic consumption, which will benefit these companies. So, all is good. Remember, the main purpose of the crackdown is not to kill the companies. They just want everyone to play by the rules which will benefit everyone over the long term. So if you are interested to invest in China companies, how should you do it? Personally, I would recommend investing through an ETF. There's a few that you can consider. For tech ETFs, you can consider IHS Hang Seng Tech ETF which has all the top tech companies from China. Or you can also consider Lion OCBC Hang Seng Tech ETF which is also the same thing. The main difference is that IHS Hang Seng Tech ETF is listed in Hong Kong and has an expense ratio of 0.25%, while Lion OCBC Hansen Tech ETF is listed in Singapore and has a higher expense ratio of 0.45%. For non-tech ETF, you could consider IHS Core Hansen Index ETF or the newly launched Lion OCBC Securities China Leaders ETF. Some of you might ask, what about KWEB and CQQQ? I did suggest those ETF in one of my earlier videos. But after talking to this investment lead, Suda, I realized that there's a potential risk for KWEB and CQQQ because the whole idea of the companies which are just proxies for China companies that are listed in US. And there's a very very small chance that US might delist China companies from the US. If that very very small chance happens, ETFs like KWEB and CQQQ will GG. So anyway, those were my thoughts on what's happening in the China market. What are your plans? Are you buying the dip or are you staying out of China market? Let me know down below. And that's all for today. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.